Let's now talk about hedging in uh, Black-Scholes uh, type models, actually starting first in the binomial tree. I in those models, because they are complete models, meaning that every claim, every random payoff can be hedged perfectly, can be replicated perfectly, uh, we talk about perfect hedging. What I want to do is eventually introduce a real data example and then apply the black shows model to it but first the binomial model to it so let me just go ahead to slide number six just to show you how the data looks like and uh, this is the 20 days of a stock price it was actually microsoft a uh, number of years ago before we wrote uh, the book and um, we will compute theoretical call price and the delta of the option which we will use for hedging and then we will see how much money we have by doing the replication using black shows that's the idea uh, i i will come back to this later right now let's just remember that the price of the option is about 55.5 uh, price of the stock is about 55.5 initially at time zero and ends up quite higher quite a bit higher at 68.81 which means that if you sell this option you will have to pay the difference between 68.81 and the strike price the strike price is going to be 55 dollars so you would lose 13 or 14 dollars something like that all right come back to that later let me go first to just to remind you how it works in the binomial tree model and i'm going to use uh, uh, the data from that example so i'll start with this uh, 55 something uh, for the stock price i will later show you that the estimated value of volatility is about 32 percent so i'm going i'm going to use sigma of 0.32 it's a 20 days period uh, interest rates were low already at that time and um, so we are going to assume that interest rate is zero the strike price is 55 it's a call option and this is 20 days turns out to be 0.08 in years if you only count working days typical number of working days in a year on Wall Street so I'll come back to that later too and this is how you you use the binomial model if you want to it to be comparable to the black scholes Merton model uh, you put your s up value to s0 times e to the sigma square root time to maturity and s down value s0 e to the minus sigma square root time to maturity so 1 over s u well the, the down factor is 1 over the up factor and let me just try to do hedging in a <coughs> in a completely uh, unrealistic model let's just do one period so I'm, I'm modeling these 20 days is just one period and I'm assuming that the st stock can go up to this value which when you compute it is uh, 60.826 or it can down down it can go down to this value 50.7544 or four. you sell this option and you want to be sure that you will be able to pay the amount needed uh, in this model assuming this model is correct so uh, whether the stock goes down or it goes up all right so what are the option payoffs at maturity either the up value 60.826 minus 55 so this number or it's going to be zero because if it goes down it's going to be out of the money because this is less than 55 therefore we have to replicate either 5.826 or 0 by having starting with delta 0 amount in bank and uh, <coughs> there is no interest uh, rate so it's just uh, initial amount in bank which which is also what you will have at the end of the period after 20 days plus 
the stock price after 20 days, if it goes up times the number of shares, delta 1, that would have to be equal to 5.826. Or if it goes down, then delta 0 plus 50.75, delta 1 has to be equal to 0. Right? This is what you do if you believe in a model. You try to replicate these two possibilities by trading in the bank and the stock. So you can compute delta 0 and delta 1 from this system of two equations by two unknowns. That's why this model is complete, because you can just solve for the replicating strategy. And um, let's say you do that. And it turns out that at the end, at maturity, the price is 68.81. What is your final profit loss if you do this? Well, from your hedging strategy, you, you will have the money that you will make is the number of shares in the stock uh, that you have times the change in the stock price. Okay, this is the change in the stock price. Uh, you would get uh, $55 for the uh, option at the end. Uh, because it will be exercised, it's in the money, and you have to pay the stock, which really means you're paying 68.81, right? Uh, and the I don't see here because it, it cancels so the, the the money that you get for the option, which is the cost of this replicating portfolio. Uh, we we assume that you sell the option exactly for the cost of this replicating portfolio. Okay, that may not be necessarily realistic, but let's assume that you actually manage to sell the option exactly for this, for the cost of this replicating portfolio, what would it be? The cost of the replicating portfolio would be delta 0 plus uh, uh, delta 1 S of 0. Right? That's your initial position, <coughs> but we assume that's what you get, and therefore uh, for the option, so that for it cancels from your initial position in the, in the uh, uh <coughs> Uh, to set up this portfolio. I, I, so if you compute this, you will have something like minus uh, 38772, uh, right? So uh, it's, uh, it's a loss. Uh, it's, a, it's a smaller loss than, than not doing anything, because if you don't do anything, in this case, you would lose, uh, you know, you would lose 68,8125, five minus uh, uh, 8125 minus uh, 55 so you lose almost $14 so you do you do hedge somewhat but you still the loss is quite significant and we want to do this also in the black shows model trading more frequently like once a day and see whether we do better in the with this particular data all right. Just to, to mention in general, uh, the uh, the number delta one when you solve uh, uh, an equation like this, uh, the number that you have to hold, the number of shares that you have to hold in your replicating portfolio is going to have this general form: upper value of your claim, which here is five point eight two six, minus down value of your claim, which is zero. Uh, in this case. Uh, over the change in uh, stock price, upper value of the stock minus the down value of the stock, so the difference of these two numbers, it, which is just the change in the price of the option over the change in the stock price. So if you want, it's delta C over delta S. We could think of it that way, right? We could think of this as delta C over delta S. And this is why uh, in Black Shows, uh, I didn't write this correctly. Delta C over delta S. This is why in Black Shows, uh, this converges to the derivative C prime uh, with respect to S. Well, there's also T there, but let's just look at it as a function of S, uh, you know, to the delta of the option, uh, the, which is the derivative of the option price with respect to the underlying. Okay, that would happen when delta T goes to zero. All right. So that, that's just to, to remind ourselves how replication works in the simplest model. Let's try to do it in the Black Shows model.
as I just said, what, what your delta in the Black-Scholes model is the derivative of the option price uh, relative to the, with respect to the underlying, in this case, S. So I'm going to use that. Since I have a call option, I need, I need to know this for the call option. And for the call option, this can be computed and this is equal to N of D1 in our notation for the Black-Scholes formula. Okay. Now, this actually kind of looks natural because if you remember the Black-Scholes formula, C of T S is equal to S N of D1 minus discounted strike price N of D2. A and if you if you forget that D1 and D2 depend on S, and then you just take a derivative, you would actually get the correct result because if you pretend this doesn't depend on S, it would be zero derivative here, you would just get N of D1. So you will get this correct result that the derivative is N of D1. But actually that happens kind of by chance because D1 and D2 do depend on S. So you will have also to differentiate those functions of S. Uh, but it turns out that things cancel and, and eventually you get N of D1. Uh, which is what you get if you pretend these these guys don't depend on S. Why can you compute this? I'm not going to do that exercise, it's just calculus. Uh, but the reason why you can do this is because we know that ddx, the derivative of n of x, we know what it is. It's equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2. Right? We know that because uh, because n, by definition, capital N of X is integral, the integral of this Gaussian density. Uh, so using this you can compute the delta of the option. All right. Now theoretically, in order to attain the uh, perfect hedge and perfect replication, you will have to rebalance frequently, in fact continuously. Now in practice that would kill you because of the transaction cost, which we are ignoring here. But then you would probably hedge uh, maybe once a day uh, if you really want to hedge. Uh, and I'm going to talk about later about whether you want to hedge or not. Um, and it requires also that the model uh, and the parameters uh, that we estimate in Black Scholes in the Black Scholes case that would be sigma. Uh, it would require that uh, those are all correct to attain perfect hedging. So. It's unlikely you can attain perfect replication, perfect hedge, but you hope to be close. And let's do that. Let's see whether we are close, at least for this particular data sample.